So the bottom line here is that no matter which market segment you belong to, broadcast, independent film, or feature film, people love Final Cut Pro. We have a 94% customer satisfaction ratio. That's absolutely incredible. People absolutely love working with Final Cut Pro. And that means that we've steadily built our community up over the last few years. Um, we've now crossed, in the end of last year, over 2 million Final Cut Pro users. Now, what's significant about that is not just the number, but frankly, the angle on the top of the graph here. What we're doing is we're growing that base faster than ever before. So I'm going to share with you a statistic which my competition probably wouldn't be too happy about. But we're growing faster than the non-linear editing marketplace. We're growing, let's be specific, more than twice as fast as the non-linear editing marketplace. 
So what does this mean in terms of where Final Cut sits with its competition? Well, again, according to independent research, when the highest end of our marketplace, the broadcast of post-professional, is choosing a non-linear editor, they are overwhelmingly selecting Final Cut Pro. So, where does that leave Adobe and Avid? Well, they'd like you to believe that they're competing with us. The truth is, they're in a race for second place. <laughs> But that's not, that's not why we do what we do. This chart is nice, but it's not the reason which we get up in the morning. What we want to do is we want to create great software. We're all about creating an incredible user experience and great software that you guys can use. So the next question is, of course, what's next? And I'm sure that's really why you're all here. Yeah. Excuse now, me. Now we're going to start unveiling a sneak peek of the next version of Final Cut Pro. And to help me with that task, I'm going to invite onto the stage Pete Steiner, who is the architect of the new version of Final Cut Pro. I am so incredibly excited to be here to talk to you about what we've been up to lately. There's been a lot of talk around about what that might be, ranging from nothing at all to just a little incremental update to the existing application to a whole bunch of other interesting rumors about what we've been up to. But I get to be one of the people that shows you exactly what it is we've been up to, which is building a brand new version of Final Cut Pro. This is a rebuilt application built from the ground up, re-architected based on modern technologies and ba based on leveraging all of the experience we've had building the existing Final Cut since its inception in 1999. So when you're building a new application, what do you do? Where do you dive in? The first thing you need to do is make sure that you've built an application that's built on modern foundation. We wanted to make sure that we built, a, that we built an application that can carry us as far into the future as the existing platform has carried us up until today, and hopefully even further than that. And the first and most important piece of building a modern, modern application on modern foundations in today's industry is building a 64-bit application. So Final Cut Pro 10 will no longer be hamstrung by the four gigabytes of memory that are available to 32-bit applications and now can take full advantage of as much memory as you can throw at the application. What this means? What this means in practical terms is larger, more complex projects, larger formats, more frames in memory, <coughs> deeper and richer effect stacks. Basically, all of the things that are ridiculously memory intensive now have full run of all of the memory you can throw at the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the other thing that we wanted to do is leverage the best that, we, that the platform has to offer to us. We've got a unique competitive advantage here at Apple in that we don't have to worry about dealing with multiple different platforms. We can deal with one platform and make it sync. And so the new Final Cut Pro is built on top of the latest OS technologies, obviously including Coco, obviously including things like Core Graphics, but also leveraging the best of Snow Leopard. And so taking advantage of core animation, um, OpenCL, Grand Central Dispatch, and a host of other things. What this allows us to do is build an application that scales from the MacBooks that you take out into the field all the way up to the beefiest hardware that you can throw at the problem. But more importantly, it also allows us to build an application that is beautiful, is seamless, seamless to use, and really helps you solve the problems that you're trying to solve.